Hi, I'm Anna. I'm Ben. We're all to say welcome to our channel. You're watching Free Your End Beyond Journeys and Season 1, Episode 23. We are on to the next exam. Hosted by Zenzei. Uh, Zenzei's hosted four exams, or proctored four exams in the past, and... The success rate is not good. <laughs> it's zero. Uh, yeah. It's like actually zero. We're, uh, the location of it's the ruins of the king's tomb. Yes. But we don't really know what the exam is going to, uh, entail mm -hmm. just yet. We've been doing a lot of, uh, theorizing, speculating based on what little context we have of this character and their seeming personality and their response to the first test. Yeah, and they're, like observations of uh, of how inhumane potentially it would have seen it would have seemed to zenzei mm -hmm. and i makes you wonder makes you wonder i love creativity within magic in general and within this show specifically so i have uh i don't know high hopes mm -hmm. i definitely want to get to know this proctor better yeah. i really love that from the last exam she was the one that could sense that something was happening to the barrier. And she seems to be someone who will not necessarily underestimate someone. Ready? Yeah. Sweet. At the ruins. I love that it's on like a cliffside. I hope I have ruins. <sighs> I love her. She's so cute. We've been doing- how'd she know? She's just talking to us. She had a sense of it. So blessed. Simple. Mm. Okay. Please! No opening, just explain it. Damn it! <laughs> I love the idea of simple. Simple can be sometimes the hardest thing to grasp or figure out, especially if you're going into something like a test and you're trying to outthink whoever wrote that test and mm. accomplish your mission. The simplest answer might be the hardest one for you to find. But it's also like, you're gonna feel a lot worse if you pass a test or if you <laughs> fail a test and it was classified or described simple. as simple. <laughs> Anyone who wishes to become you, a first class mage will pass this exam. I was about to say, or like, I'm very glad to. that that was included because it, it does act within the vein of simplicity. Like, mm -hmm. it, it's, you could maybe argue that Zenzei has, like, an efficient type of mindset, right? If this is something that anybody hoping to pass this type of exam to be a first class mage could do, it would be simple for them. Mm -hmm. Which makes me very intrigued to see how Freeren will handle this. Can you imagine, like, start of the test, happens, free run completes it in 30 seconds, everybody else has to think about it. Okay. Conquering, Conquering the, the labyrinth? labyrinth? I love I love labyrinths. labyrinths. Raiding, Raiding a dungeon. dungeon. I don't... <sighs> Reach the deepest floor. What if there's a mimic chest in there? I was just thinking the same thing. <laughs> あの、可能にするのは一級魔法使い。ミトハダロウが全人未踏だろうが、ねじ伏せて突き進むんだ。大新聞にたどり着いたということをどう証明すればいいのかという。証明の必要はない。私も共に最初に。Hell yeah. You can control your hair like that? What? She's letting them be able to leave. Yeah. Wow. wow. Pacifist for real. I love her. Whoa. Time limit. So fucking cool. You can use your hair to do so many different things. I bet <laughs> Zenzi's a great spell? cook. Was that the spell that she wanted? So there is going to be a teamwork element, maybe even just to get down to the bottom, because whoever gets to the bottom can pass. I mean, you could do it all together, right? Yeah. <laughs> それは無理だな。うん。why? He's going to die first. 
Denkin's gonna have to save his ass. Like, that's gonna happen. You think Freerun's been here before? Everyone else is going in with their team. I like that Zenza is gonna be the last one to go in too, seemingly. Nor assist you. I love that she's like, I want to watch you yeah. in particular. <laughs> I'm surprised that Livia oh, and Kane aren't here. What the fuck? Do you think that's like it all based within the same... As the photography? As, yeah, as the same origin as the photography? <sighs> Do you think Sensei is going with the group she believes in the most so that she also gets to the bottom? <laughs> it was Himal who loved dungeons. Oh! He's a completionist! Love it. Oh. <laughs> Before I know it. Oh my god. That smile. I love the reaffirmation of it really doesn't make sense, huh? They haven't even entered. I'm so surprised that they did not go with Free Rin. I am very surprised. Maybe by it's that. knowing and based off of their last conversation of not being able to pass the last test alone. Maybe it's like an independence type thing, you know? Mm -hmm. They're not going to do it yourself. They're going to try to not rely on her. Yeah, I could have mapped it out a hell of a lot quicker, right? Cuts to free run right now. Uh-huh. Oh. <laughs> My god. <laughs> what is Sensei gonna think? <laughs> the one percent. <laughs> well, the accuracy in spells. <laughs> Surely it's not gonna happen. <laughs> long they're holding on. It's dark and... <laughs> She's Look like... Sensei. Maybe I picked the wrong group to try. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, you picked the right one. They're just having fun along the way. Jesus, that's fucking dark. How heavy? Jesus the whole Christ. Ceiling. Oh, good to have cool. Lofin. Lofin can move real fast. Ugh. Oh! How do you defeat a gargoyle? 
you dismantle it. Turn Ooh. it into a gargoyle-like stain like the person in the hallway before. Whoa! It was like a beam struggle with no struggle. Oh my god. Do you see the smaller mage's star staff? Yeah. Oh no, is she in the hallway? Ooh. No, thank you. No, <laughs> they're gonna save her, come on. Oh my god. The golem. Hopefully she used it. Oh no. Wow. Whoo! Damn! Full on sprint! At least we know the golems will work. Ah. That's very fair. <laughs> Cute. I don't think I've ever quite seen such cool, like, means of exploration in an anime, you know? Oh. Look at her running, she's so happy. <laughs> Is she not only gonna get to the bottom, she's but complete everything? She's mapping the whole thing. She's... Before dawn. <laughs> Someone who desires to be a first class mage. Man, we've come so far. Magic junk. God. それで笑ってしまったんです。きっと私はそんなフリーレン様の姿が好きだから。ほう。思い出に入れるんだと思います。Do you see that now Sensei is smiling? Evel, I'm assuming, right? Are we really sabotaging? Whoa. I know we saw it before, but I love it. The fact that he can actually bring the flowers about? Is it the- I bet they're all gonna be- Oh, no. What? Gargoyles of them? God. Oh. Do you think we're gonna get a free run versus fern and a fern versus free run? That'd be crazy. Sensei's there too, though. And she has to also survive and get through. So there's gonna be three of them. Oh. Damn, that's fucking cool. They were only fighting Laufen. Mm -hmm. oh, I think in the opening it's Freerin that they're fighting. 
魔族か魔物の仕業だろう。魔力も技量もラオフェンと同等だった。所作もそうだ。記憶さえも利用している可能性がある。What the fuck? It's like the fucking. Whatever creature in episode 6, I think. Are we putting something into But not enough copies that they were able to copy all of you. More varieties so you can think about whose magic would be more effective on another person.、Mm -hmm. As an opponent.、Mm -hmm. It's free run. It's free run. One more time, I'll tell you. If I was a kid, I'd be a kid. Oh! Jesus Christ. I don't know. Damn. It was Free Rin. Are all of them going to have to fight Free Rin at the bottom? Okay, that was Free Rin Beyond Journey's End, Season 1, Episode 23. I want to touch on something that I was saying、uh, during this episode just to elaborate a little bit on it. Okay. I was trying, like, paraphrasing, saying something along the lines of I don't know if I've seen,、uh, like, exploration depicted as well in an anime before in this type of way. And while saying it, I was like, damn, this is like impossible to convey within my、uh, terminology in such a short amount of time in a reactionary response. But、uh, I've done a, a, a couple of,、uh, of. I've had a little bit of experience in adventuring in my life, just a little bit. But there's also adventuring that I'm sure everybody can relate to when it comes to like video games or like. like You know, any type of fantasy literature.、Mm -hmm. And I think that what I was trying to mean or trying to say is that there, there, there's an amount of detail and time within adventuring in a labyrinth or a dungeon or a castle or uh, a, like a dig site that. I don't think is very often conveyed in, in visual media because of their,、uh, the story's expedited sen sense of self to get to, to battles or specific events happening.、Mm -hmm. We get a lot of like montage moments of adventuring and then big moments play out in time. And within Freerun, the entire premise of, of tone and time within the show up until this point. Lends itself so well to depicting a dungeon as such of a way that it has this episode. It's not just like one dangerous thing that you stumble upon, it's a, it's a plethora of them, and they're all so unique and, but repetitive sometimes, depending on like a mimic, right? And it, it's so refreshing to see it. Can it depict it in such a way. I love it. And I love the idea that you have like a rappel, like that you can break open the bottle and you have a golem. That, like, I, I, there's so much detail within Free Run, and it makes me. It's one of my favorite shows that I've ever seen in my entire life for a reason. And it's because I love things like that. Right. I know we'll definitely get into what it is about the dungeon. And the pacing with the dungeon in Free Run, like in particular with this episode, we're going to get into that more because that was the episode, was a lot of exploration. But what I'm meaning is that we're going to be getting into the maybe more sentimental and emotional side of what that adventuring looks like and what it means to、yeah. a particular person. And this whole idea that we're talking about of like taking the actual pacing of this adventure, of this dungeon, and not just.、Uh, Quickly showing it to you in a montage, but really like giving you all of the ups and downs and the feelings and the twists and turns, not only are authentic to what it would be like to actually be adventuring and going up and down and through different hallways, winding back into an entrance that you've already been in before, but it fits with just the entire adventure of Free Run Beyond Journey's End to begin with. The show and the pacing has always been from the very beginning. 
the storytelling of an adventure mm -hmm. and all of the emotional themes that have been put into the story continuously ebbing and flowing throughout it. Yeah. Um, but I also really like the escape golem. I kind of wish I had one of those, you know, for my own life. Like if I ever get like overstimulated or super stressed out in a moment and it's like your fight or flight kicks in, you just like, I need to run out of the room right break now. I'll just bottle. like break it. Yeah. Uh, be scooped up and carried out of whatever <laughs> room I'm in. Um, one thing that I thought was so fascinating was upon like Denkin wanting everybody to work together for exam, one of the best uh, responses or like, you know, reactions to it, I thought was Freerin in terms of like, all right, Fern, let's go. It wasn't until after there was one person, a few people had already said no, that led Freerun to make that decision. Mm -hmm. And I like that it seems like the implied, you know, intention from Freerun was that she would have done it all together if that was the, if that was on the table, mm -hmm. that might've been the best way to do it. Not only because of time management, being able to explore everything, but just, in terms of the challenge itself and right. getting it done, even though Freerun obviously I don't think knew about the clone like, Definitely. you know, uh, which, okay, sidebar, it immediately reminded me of the Einsem from mm -hmm. like the illusions that we got, uh, the Einsem's illusions that we got, but obviously vastly different because these seem almost like tailor made for to fight against mages. It's different. The Einsem was attacking. Uh, as a free run, like back then had had shown to Fern that as long as you are not emotionally compromised, this illusion magic, you will not fall for it. You yeah. will be able to, as a mage, you can detect that this is a magic being used against you. You will be able to realize that this person in front of you is not your lost loved one that you wish was speaking to you. But as we saw then, it's hard to get over that emotional hump of being able to see the person that you love speaking to you and saying words and relating memories that the two of you share. In this regard, this is illusion magic, but not it, but it actually can physically, it's showing you a depiction of a person, but this person, instead of mentally and emotionally attacking you, is physically attacking yeah. you and has all, as the Einstein's illusion had all the memories, this one might also yeah that was the observation the that we got mm -hmm. and i like i think that there's one of two directions that it can go one of which being like this fucking crazy ass show of strength of what freerun is able to do and it, against all of these other mages that we see and are putting up there at least on some scale like denkin and where we're classifying them and that could be a fucking incredible fight with insane animation or what i'm gonna go with was the idea of through Laufen and Denkin talking and coming to the conclusion that it they might be, have each other's same disposition with memories. I think that this version of Freerun's just going to get stuck in a mimic. And that's how they're <laughs> going to defeat it. That's the way to defeat yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> so when we first saw that it was just Laufen uh, as the illusion, as the uh, one that they were fighting, I started kind of getting like, okay, so what is the situation here? Can we make endless copies? Is this magic where we can only make so many copies at once and that's why we're not copying all of the people that are within the room right now? But now, as I'm left leaving the episode, I imagine that as soon as you enter this dungeon, a copy of you is made. And yeah. it is just somewhere in the dungeon. Mm -hmm. And whoever comes upon it will be coming upon it. I think that Warbell, Airy, and Sharf uh, just happen to be lucky for the fact that they came up against all and i don't mean lucky in terms of like a battle i just mean like luck like what's the co like that's so crazy that you came up upon the co copies of you guys all three of them yeah not like lucky like wow that's gonna be such an easy fight congrats i mean we get shown this like pendant emerald gem that uh glows purple and that almost was the thing that like signified the entrance of these things you know mm -hmm. and there was language used like Whoever is able to cast all of these things simultaneously must be like a very dangerous person to deal with. And I don't know if that is any sort of like confirmation that there is somebody who casted yeah. it, whether it would be 
Zenze or uh, like a anybody else, right? Or if it has to do as more of like a over like a, like you know overarching protection a against protection the king's tomb, magic. another trap yeah. type of thing. Yeah, a, a magic that has been put onto the tomb in order to ensure that uh, the remains of the king are forever protected. Yeah. Man, one of the coolest things that I've ever seen in this show was the idea of, like, mapping out dungeons in this world. I'm trying to find the actual time that we got to see Fern doing it, but... Oh, it, on, like, a little screen? Yeah, here that, okay, we go. here we go. Oh, my Check God, it dude. It's so neat. And, like, my, like, during the episode, my mind immediately jumps to photography, right? Mm -hmm. And how we've learned about it and it's been presented to us so far within this world. Sign and Gorilla Warrior. That you're, like... Ha like, obviously, this, I would imagine, was conjured up before photography was, it's just out like, of necessity. It, what she's doing is creating a piece of paper. It's like a, oh, you don't have a notepad on you at the time. Just make, like, a piece of paper that you can will back and forth into existence. I would love having something like that in my life. Especially if it returns to you having still have written on it what you had previously written on it it's so cool like i wonder if um by the nature of magic within this show this is a spell that you've learned and you can't really tweak things right like in video games and stuff you're able to like tweak how a map would look or how different like uh like you know you markers would be indicated marker. and within this little map you see like what I imagine to be fern highlighted as a red dot. Mm -hmm. And then you're categorizing steps and different routes. I wonder like how specific in nature the actual spell for this is and if you would be able to change things. Or if you're able to even see outside of this small range that we're able to see right now within fern. Because as we can see in the map, it's like very... A small it's like 20 30 percent of the map we're actually getting an eye on but ahead of where they currently are like walls over you can see an outline of things that i imagine were like areas that have already been plotted out and mapped yeah. out but what it ends up looking like from fern's point of view it looks like pokemon like in a cave without using flash like yeah. that you can only see within this radius and maybe if you move to the left a little more of the left side of the map will be revealed to you <laughs> That's how I imagine it is for some reason, you know? Like, that's how specific it needs to be. Do you feel like this... I One of my wanderings, wonderings about this is if you left this dungeon, could you then print what is on this magical piece of paper, this magical map, so that everyone had a map layout of this dungeon going forward? I think that's a really interesting point. Um... We can maybe print the photography, o kind of. Maybe it's only this clouded while we're in the dungeon. Maybe you can only access the map while you are in the dungeon that you are currently mapping out, you know? I'm not sure. Because I think that it having the restriction of visibility seemingly even here while we're in it would give me a hint that you wouldn't be able to reference it outside of the dungeon. Mm hmm. Hmm. I love Himmel's completionist attitude. Yeah. He's so cool. And he sees it as, like, his grand goal of, like, still continuing on and being able to save tons of people. I definitely want to go to him articulating why it is that he is a completionist and wants to turn back even though the monster is just down the stairs. Hmm. I think it's a little before what we had written down. As we travel the dun- Oh. Better be quicker than that. Yeah. <laughs> Isn't it better to have fun while helping people? It won't always be like this. As we travel, the dungeons will become more life-threatening. I intend to enjoy it until the end. I'll have fun adventuring, raiding dungeons, defeating monsters, finding treasures. And before I know it, I'll, I'll have save saved the, the world. world. God, that's the kind of adventure I want to have. It's within this, like... We're watching another show that I'm getting a similar feeling of, but, like, within this, like, genuine passion and seeing a clear future for yourself, 
uh, and like you get this determined person and this determined nature of a person that once they speak about what's yet to come and how sure of it they are, you just have a sense of like, they're right. Mm -hmm. Like a blind belief and faith in what they're saying. Right. A, a character that does have a more passionate uh, personality is definitely infectious. Something else I want to add is that it, that fits this show is that what he painting for us is that this dungeon in particular is not the adventure. Like this show is meant to show us that life and even, even going into death, that is all an adventure of, your life is an adventure. And Humel's painting this picture of all of the things he's going to be doing throughout his life. And by the end of it, he will have saved the world. And mm -hmm. all of that and everything in between, all of the little moments are the continuation of his adventure. It doesn't stop once he exits a dungeon or defeats a final boss. Yeah. It continues on into the next point. And he lived that way. Mm -hmm. You know, even though we didn't get too much time with him while he was still alive... I like it. It's just so consistent with the character we continue to see in flashbacks. It's um, it's so it's Free Run's infectious with her her smile and her curiosity, her desire to collect and continue to find more magic. Obviously, we're gonna get into how other characters feel about that later, but he Mel's zest for life and what life is was obviously infectious to Free Run as it is to us in flashbacks. It's he Mel that wanted to live life to the fullest. You want to, why would I just go right to the bottom of this dungeon when I could walk around and take it all in? Like someone built this. Like yeah. this, there's so many things. There could be nooks and crannies. There could be a grimoire you didn't even know about. Like they're really just taking the time. Why are you rushing yeah. through life? That attitude is so infectious. If you are like him out and you are watching this or listening to this currently, you should look up the game animal well on steam and consider buying it that's all i will say about that matter <laughs> going forward i thought it was really interesting that zenzei was like you're the one i don't understand fern mm -hmm. you know do we think a question here too with this line we know that obviously she decided as the proctor to pick this group in particular to travel with at first my feelings were is she picking this group because of free Rin? but with the fact that she's pointing out that Fern is the one that she's intrigued in right now. I'm wondering if that is maybe one of her main points of picking this team because she acknowledges how skilled mm -hmm. Fern is. We know already from the first day when we walked in and all the test takers were there, Fern was pointed out yeah. as having immense strength. And they were like, whoa, this mage that we've never really seen before right there is going to be a contender. Not only is she amazingly skilled, but... There's something perplexing about her with the fact that, like, since I can't sense the the passion there. Mm -hmm. Man, I I think that's a good point because it's like, dig. Let's dig deeper in the thought of. We know it. We know the response that Sensei has to Fern's answer and explanation and the expression on her face. Right. We know, and saw Himel's response about why he loves being so completionist about it and what that does to Freerun and Freerun's memory. What like this theme that's ongoing and infectious that the, the, the idea of it being infectious, this passion and happiness and joy, like it, it's such an interesting through line here for a character that I don't imagine we're going to stay with too long being Zenze, but it's something that she's able to see and understand by a conversation. Mm -hmm. it's such an interesting reiteration. I've never seen a mage as skilled as you at your age. I love that because how you referenced people already pointed out Fern and how skilled that she was. But I like we know based off of the classification that Zenze said that they are very proficient in their own right. Mm -hmm. But She's it's so the top of the top. fucking nice to hear and like just be able to stick it permanently on, on a wall <laughs> that somebody as skilled as Zensei has never seen a mage as skilled as Fern at the, at their age. Mm -hmm. I love that being just a fact, you know? You must have trained rather hard 
and yet I sense no passion or determination it's like in you. It's like an enigma. Like, why could you... How are you so strong with the fact that I know you must have trained so hard, but I sense no reason why you would have done that training? Yeah. And, like, we could feel it. We could see it very early on with, with the passion and, like, nope, this is what I'm going to do. I was told that I have to hit this rock. I'm going to fucking do it, you know? And which segues into Fred being, like, I must have used up all my passion and dedication back then when doing it. And, oh, my God. I I cannot wait to be able to rewatch the show because one of my favorite moments was that cliffside scene where – if I remember correctly, which I think I do, was Fern about to take her own life. Mm -hmm. And obviously the interruption coming in as it did, but with the locket of her parents. Whew, what a great moment. So Zenzai says, why do you continue searching for magic? Miss Freerin seems to be having fun, doesn't she? The first time I entered a dungeon, Miss Freerin joyfully smiled while collecting magic junk, which is a, a great phrase. Um... Magical junk. <laughs> and then just and then the she smile. Smiles. Yeah. It, and made it, me smile too. Don't, doesn't that, isn't that so tangible in a world of fiction and magic? If you are able to remember an interaction with somebody that you have genuine care and passion for, and think about a time that you got to see them happy and relive that moment through yourself and your own perception of them being happy, it legitimately. Yes forces a smile because it's just so real like listening to someone talk about something that they're obsessed with whether it's like a hobby that they're doing yeah. or a new show that they watch and you know nothing about it but what you like is how excited they are about what they're talking about and you like that they have this thing that they find so enjoyable and you can't help but be happy because you love that this person's happy yeah. and their energy's infectious. That person's letting you see it. You yeah, know? they're letting you into like their bliss in this world that can be kind of shitty sometimes. It's uh something else that this makes me think of is like the idea of paying it forward. Mm -hmm. Oh, pay for the car behind you and then hopefully they'll pay for the car behind them or And then you help, get back in line help and an order like a bunch of food, yeah. <laughs> no, and then help an old lady Across the street mm -hmm. if she's okay with that don't just like grab an old lady and force her across the street but that's what we see in this episode is Himmel then getting to Freerin and Freerin getting to Fern and then Fern getting to Sensei at yeah. the end and having seeing Fern smile in this moment and then the camera changes its angle and we see a smile has now spread across her face as well after hearing the explanation of mm -hmm. I continue searching magic to see that. See her happy. God, it's so great. I'm glad that, like, so far, we have been so, like, vindicated for loving Zenze so much with so little. Mm -hmm. I feel like it's I like often a, She's like a good person. Yeah, I feel like I often <laughs> fall in love with characters who end up not being who I thought they not were. Not being maybe a great person. Yeah. But before we leave this scene, I just have like one compliment left yeah. to say that about cool. Fern's character. Yeah. Fern, I, th I think that um, is this is a real life take of like why I appreciate this. I feel like there are a lot of people in this world who do not have this grandiose plan for themselves, this huge desire, this lofty dream or job that they're trying to get to, like a Himel who at the end of his story wants to save the world. There are people like Fern who don't necessarily have a massive reason or understand the why or a next step. Like Fern's like, yeah, this is one thing I wanted to do, but I didn't know what I wanted to do after that. That's so real. But what takes her through life and what she's now found as like, a, you don't need to have this goal for yourself. You can go through life living with the people around you that you love and, and living life with them and through them and finding joy in what they are. And through that, maybe you'll find something else that you want to do and they'll support you in that. And that it's kind of like a give and a take yeah. relationship and that you don't have to be this person that's shooting for the stars at all times. Like you can live your life perfectly happy, coexisting with someone that you love and seeing them happy in moments. Yeah, you're right. I love like the observation that until this point, Freer and obviously has let Fern try and fail at getting her out of mimics <laughs> and not telling her the, cur the the easiest way to yeah. do it, pushing them fully in or 
freer like and blasting to the other side because of what it does to her hair. But the idea that this moment in time was the, the info drop, the lore drop of how to truthfully deal with mimics. How many fucking times has Fern had to see this and exhaust herself trying to pull Fern out of there? Or Fern out, out of there. What it makes me think back to is I think in the first opening... There is a little sequence of Stark and Fern watching Freerun stuck in a mimic. And that tells me that even then, she didn't teach Fern this or tell yeah. Fern this, if that really did happen at that time. And that's what that made me think of. She probably blasted it from the inside with offensive magic or something and ended up with the ringlets. So in talking about the Maquette spell... Mm-hmm. Uh, Freerun says, Fern, that spell is only 99% accurate. How the fuck are you able to, like, put a percentage of accuracy to a spell? Like, you've had... I know, right? You would have had to, like, done so much, like, testing to be able to, like, confidently say this shit. But I love... That a spell is only 99% accurate. It's amazing. Do you have to for 99% or are you just giving that 1% chance that fits with the idea of what Sensei says at the beginning? First class mages are to make the impossible possible. Yeah. Is Freerun giving that 1% because the possibility of making the impossible possible is always there? That's a great point. Because I feel like this has never worked for her. I don't yeah. think she has any evidence in her life that there was actually a grimoire and that was what she was sensing and not a mimic. If it does work, what do you think it would be on? Like, do you think that, like, free, like, narratively, right? What would be the payoff? Like, if Freerun spends her entire life getting stuck in mimics <laughs> because of that 1% chance, when it does work, It'd be, have is it, like something incredibly close to flame or something incredibly <laughs> close to some other like you know I, I feel like it needs it would have to be something that everyone else in the room at that moment would find to be magical junk but free run water. heaven that's where heaven is that's the last <laughs> like can't be anywhere if there's a mimic you jump inside of it try to Heaven's push yourself through there. you're there <laughs> man i love when we, we get to see any type of action within Freerun. I think that the, the way that they handle fights. fights and space is so dynamic and you can really feel how like vast this area is and the scale of it. So, something in terms of magic that I didn't think about uh, is Sharf's magic prior to this episode. I wasn't thinking too deep about trying to figure out exactly how his self-made spell could work. Mm. Uh wasn't thinking about and questioning, oh, does he need to have a flower field to be able to do his self-made spell? Yeah. No, he creates the flower field because there are spells for that. Yeah. And then uses his own spell on top of that. I love, like, the building on top of that in terms of evolution of spells from what we've talked about before. I think that I the matchups were that Warbell was going to take Aerie, uh, Aerie's going to take Sharf, and Sharf is going to take Warbell. I could be wrong. I know Verbell's taking Aerie for sure. Do you remember, like, uh, so when we saw Ubel, like, use a similar spell or the exact same, right, after having it used upon her with mm -hmm, Verbell, like, empathizing it, and understanding people. In the discussion, we were talking about if there was, like, a turn, like, an evolution that ubel was able to stack on top of that because there was a sequence that it didn't look like eye contact was being made so i assumed right when we first see uh warbell get detained there that that's a similar like like it, oh it has to be ubel mm -hmm. but then in order to counteract it he did the you know the restriction that he distorted he told the Warbell. vision i so i wonder like i would love confirmation or not on if ubel was able to like change a rule mm. in it or not or revisit that we haven't seen how she is doing in here uh and if she's traveling with land or not uh i'm sure she is following him because she's still trying to figure out you know things about him and his magic um do you think that anyone is going to die or I that all of them will use their golems in time because i mean i think that's pretty 
amazing. But there are people that have a lot of pride who, yeah. or you could, honestly, you could get attacked and not be able to actually access the golem in time and have it shatter before you're dead. Yeah. The, the golem could carry out a corpse if you're not quick enough. So I, I feel like the one guy that's like, I'm going in alone. I don't have high hopes for him. Yeah. In terms of actually surviving. I don't know. I don't really, I hope everybody leaves. Okay. Like, you know, like Zenzei said, like if there's aspiration or there's potential with these mages that she would love to see them mm -hmm. continue to stay alive. But I And that's know. why she gives them this this golem in order to like but we know that there are so many characters, especially with this sort of like high status, you think of yourself maybe as the best of the best, that a pride factor could get in the way of like you won't use it in time mm -hmm. enough to save you. Yeah. That poor hmm. girl. Yeah. The, I loved her star okay. staff. We didn't even get to see it in I action. Know. I know. Like, I'm glad we did get to see that the golem works and what it does. Uh, but I was like, oh, that star staff is so cute. Oh, we get pushed in a spike room, which is like so classic dungeon. Not even funny. I wanted to see like right when that did happen, right when she did get taken away or like the second before it. Okay, Laufen goes on a gargoyle because she's awesome. I love the animation for Laufen specifically this episode. It's so fucking cool. Oh. I know that she's not the strongest, but she's so fun to watch fight. Agreed. Whew. So she gets blasted into the spike room, the yep. smaller mage. And just, she's so scared. She they try to get in. Den can, can't even get in the door. And... I, I love that she listened. Like, obviously, she was younger. You could tell by her facial expressions, even prior to this, that she was wary and she purposefully stayed behind to be with Duncan and, like, a bigger group of people because she was scared. And so I'm glad that she used it as soon as he told her to. Do you think there's anything to the metals that are all over the place? I know that we get, like, the idea that uh, there's some, like, person, person who collects, collects them, them, right? I, I wonder if... Like, that has any, like, a uh, hint to, like, an answer within the dungeon, but also, like, potentially significance to the person who was buried here, or the dynasty that it was created in. Maybe. My other idea Unified is dynasty. that it's something, like, once this test is over, we won't even be thinking about them anymore, and then we'll wander into this sit new city or town and Freer will be like, oh, that guy over there is the one that collects these things. Yeah, and yeah. Then she dumps them all on, like, all, so <laughs> many on a table in front of him. And he passes out and then gives her, like, everything that he has or, like, feeds her or something. All right. That's all I have you. Uh, I think so, yeah. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe. And we hope to see you next time.